This is Law and Crime Network. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden. We're in week two of the prosecution's case out of Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, now, the defendant, Adam Montgomery, is facing several charges, including second degree murder and assault in the death of his five year old daughter, Harmony. The victim's stepmother, Kayla Montgomery, testified this week that the defendant beat Harmony to death in December 2019 after the five-year-old had a bathroom accident in the vehicle they lived out of. Out of fear, Kayla said she helped the defendant conceal Harmony's body, but to this, to this day, her body has never been found. Kayla's testimony came off the back of a plea deal after she faced perjury charges for initially lying to the investigators. As for the defendant, he's admitted guilt to falsifying evidence and abuse of a corpse. But there's no indication of whether he'll take the stand or not. Following the conclusion of Kayla's testimony on Monday, additional prosecution witnesses were called to the stand. So let's go through other key moments seen in court so far. On Monday afternoon, the state called Courtney Garcia to the stand. Her husband is a childhood friend of the defendant, and she recalled speaking with him between December 2019 and January 2020, the same window prosecutors say Harmony was killed. So let's get you into that New Hampshire courtroom to check out this testimony. Did you have a conversation with him about Harmony and her condition? We did, yes, or I did, yes. Okay. Um, uh, where did the defendant, where did Mr. Montgomery say she was at that point? Uh, he told us that he brought Harmony back to uh, her mother. Uh, do you know what her mother's name is? Uh, Crystal, maybe. Okay. And let me ask with regards to that, I apologize. Did the defendant ever tell you what her name is? I no. should have asked a better question there. No, okay. he, didn't. he did not. And with regards to how she w was back with her mother, what did the defendant tell you about why that happened or how it happened or when it happened? He told us that he brought her back to her mother because Harmony was having multiple accidents in the vehicle. And by accidents, what do you mean by accidents? Uh, she was using the bathroom in the vehicle. Um, did, what, if anything, did the defendant say about Harmony now being with her mother as compared to Harmony being with Adam? Um, I'm sorry, not. Sure. Um, at any point in time, did he talk about um, what kind of, with regards to what Harmony was being provided for, what she could be provided for from her mother as compared to what Adam was able to offer at that time? A home. A home? Yes. On Tuesday morning, Aaron Sweeney took the stand. He's a former tow truck driver that was called to tow the car the Montgomery's were living in on December 7th, the day Harmony died. At the time, the car broke down at the traffic light near the parking lot the family was living in, and according to prosecutors, Harmony's body would have already been stuffed in the CMC tote bag as the vehicle was being cleared out. Here are some standout moments from that encounter. Um, one of the last sections I'd like to ask um, about this particular slip is in your remarks section. You wrote two things. Could you please read those for us? Uh, no registration and no phone. Okay. Um, and when you say no registration, would you have asked for a registration? Yeah. Okay. And is that uh, is that a normal part of your practice when you make a tow? Yes. It's just to so get the most accurate information on the vehicle itself. Okay. And about the phone number, same thing? Same thing. Mr. Sweeney, I know that you stated that when you made this tow, there were two male individuals that helped get things out of the car. Well, let me ask you, when you were making this tow, did you see any children at all? No. None whatsoever? No. Towards the end of Tuesday, a family friend of the Montgomery's who also used to sell the couple drugs took the stand. Now, Anthony Bodaro lived at the Colonial Village Apartments and allowed the family to stay in the complex parking lot. After Harmony's death, Bodaro let the family borrow his Audi after their car broke down. Prosecutors asked Bodaro if he saw Harmony at all during the time he let the family borrow his car. Kayla Montgomery was also asked a similar question when she testified earlier in the week. Let's hear what she had to say first and then what Bodero said days later. Uh, you told the grand jury that the last time you saw Harmony was November 30th. 
Yes. Which was three days after your eviction? Yes. But they stayed at Colonial Village, you have said, for about two weeks? Yes. After eviction, right? Yes. And you told the grand jury that uh, Bordello saw Harmony every day behind the Colonial? Yes. For those two weeks, right? Yes. That was a slip-up, right? No, because he did see her. Okay. For two weeks? He did see her a couple of times, yes. You said every day behind the Colonial? Not every day. Okay. For those two weeks, he saw her, right? Yes. For a couple of weeks, right? A couple of days. During those weeks, he did see her for a couple of days. Do you recall which days? No, I just know we were still in the car. So they played a section of uh, Kayla's statement, and you got pretty upset with that, right? I guess. Got pretty upset with what you were hearing. I guess, yes. And you said that you never saw Harmony. I never did. And that you didn't go down there. Let's go. When did I not see Harmony? You're just saying I didn't see Harmony, but where? When? At the Colonial Village. No. And that you didn't go down to the car on a daily basis. Right. Well, two days they stood in the car. I went down at least a couple of times each day. For two days you went down a couple of times At least a day? couple of times, yes. Those two days? Those two days. Okay. And um, you never, you're saying you never waved a harmony? Never. Another topic explored during Anthony Bodero's testimony was his prior convictions and why he was provided immunity to testify. Later on cross-examination, the defense challenged his cooperation in the case. Have you ever been convicted of a felony drug charge? Yes, sir. And Mr. Bodero, did you provide testimony to the grand jury related to this case back in, in March of 2022? So March 21st of 2022. I believe, yes, sir. And do you remember being asked in that grand jury proceeding whether or not you sold drugs to the defendant back in 2019? Yes, sir. Did you provi provide an honest answer to that question? No, I did not. During that grand jury testimony, were you given any type of immunity before you were asked that qu the questions no. about drugs? And after your testimony, after your grand jury testimony, uh, did you agree to meet with, with, with investigators regarding the case? Yes, sir. And was that in September of 22, of 2022? Sounds about right. At that point, had you been provided any type of immunity regarding drug activity? Uh, no, I don't think so. Do you recall? Uh, uh, agreeing to meet with those investigators, signing a written document. I did agree to meet with them, yes, with an attorney. Did you have an understanding about how your statements could be used, whether they could be used against you? Yes. What was your understanding of that? That they would not use it against me as long as I told the truth. Regarding your testimony here today, have you been provided immunity based on that drug information? Yes, sir. You would go to, when you would go down there, you would see the boys in wave. Of course. And you want to have nothing to do with this investigation or harmony, right? It's not the way you're making it sound. I want to help you guys. Who? The prosecution helped find who killed that little girl. Okay, so one of the things before they stayed in your car was you drove Adam and Kayla and uh, the kids to get clothes out of their broken down car. I don't recall that. I don't think I ever did that. Okay. I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't recall I ever did that. Okay. Why would I, no. I would have stuffed my car with anything. Let's put it like that. You wouldn't know what? I would not stuff my car with a whole bunch of furniture or bags or anything like that. Okay, so bags that were from a car that people had lived in for seven days, you never got them and packed them into your car. I don't recall ever doing that. No, I okay. do not. 
The second to last witness on Tuesday was Kayla Montgomery's mother, Christina Lubin. On the stand, she told the jury she met Harmony once in the beginning of December 2019. Lubin also spoke about the Montgomery's staying with her later in the month after Harmony died. Now, during that stay, mention of a red cooler came up, and that cooler is allegedly one of the places Harmony's body was stored after she was killed. Let's look at how that went down in court. Beginning in the winter, December of 2019, at some point did you receive a phone call from your daughter? I spoke to her a couple times. I'm not sure exactly which particular one you're... Let me be more specific. At some point, um, did, uh, did you ever see her and Adam and the two boys at your house, but not with Harmony? Yes. And when did that occur in December of 2019? That was... I, it was before December. Um, it was shortly after Thanksgiving because I had just put my tree up. And I don't remember the exact date. I just remember shutting off the overhead lights so that the kids could see the Christmas lights and the ornaments. And that's when you saw Harmony that that's time? That's when I saw Harmony. Okay. Um, later in the month, uh, did they come back to stay with you, I'm sorry, uh, for a longer period of time than just one afternoon? Yes. Okay. And when they came the second time, was Harmony still there? No, she wasn't. When did you find out that they had been evicted from 77 Guilford Street? Um, Kayla had called me at one point before seeing them at my house mm -hmm. about having a flat tire and needing money for it. Um, so I, I was leaving to leave for the day. So I left them money in a cooler in my um, side hallway so that they could get their tire fixed. You said a moment ago that you left money in the in the past there for for Kayla and for for the defendant. Um, was the cooler in the hallway when you did that? Yes. And how would you leave that money so that somebody else wouldn't take it? So it was next to my apartment door, um, at the end of the hallway, and I would put money under a piece of cardboard, and then close the cover. So the cardboard was inside the cooler? Yes. Only at this point in time. Uh, do you recognize the object in that photo? Yes. And what is that object? That's the red cooler from my apartment. And I'd like to also show you State's Exhibit 29. Actually, and you said that's the cooler in your apartment. Is that generally in the same condition as you would keep it? It hasn't been scratched up or marked or anything else at that point? Yes, it looks a little bit dirty. A little but, dirty? Yeah. I'm not going to show you what's been marked State's Exhibit 29 for identification purposes only. Um, is that still the same cooler? It looks like the same cooler. Okay. And can I ask, uh, what are, are there any other differences that you see with regards to that cooler from how we just looked at it a moment ago versus how you're looking at it there? It looks really dirty. Okay. And do you see any stickers that have been placed on it? Yes, I do. But still the same cooler? It looks like the same cooler. Lubin's job involves refurbishing furniture, and she told the jury she owns a number of different hand saws. Keep in mind, Kayla Montgomery told the jury that the defendant allegedly wanted to use a hand saw and blender to dismember Harmony's body. This topic was explored on both the direct and cross-examination of Lubin. I have a table saw, I have a circular saw, I have a band saw, I have a sill saw. Sill saw, what kind of saw is that? Um, it's a saw that I use to cut pallet, not go through the um, nails on pallet wood. It's like a hand, it's a handle and it's got long blades that you can put in it. Long blades, how long? Um, well, the blade itself is like this big and then you have the end piece that attaches inside the machine. How does that saw operate? It's about yay big. Is it round or is it? No, it's like a, just a long blade about this thick, okay. and it kind of goes vibrates back and forth as so it. I'm assuming you hold your hands up to be what, maybe about an inch thick? Is that about right? Yeah, maybe uh, almost an inch. You've got, uh, I believe you said you've got a jigsaw. Um, do you have a, um, a miter saw or a chop saw? Do I do have a miter saw. Yes. 
I'm going to go ahead and show you what's been marked stakes is up at 63. Do you have a grinder? No. You don't own a grinder? No, I don't own a grinder. And uh, how long have you been doing woodworking? About six years. Six years or so? Mm hmm. It's fair to say you've got a lot of different tools for those jobs. Mm hmm. Woodworking. Yes. And a grinder is not one of them? No. Good afternoon. I'm Caroline Smith. And I do have a few questions for you, and let's start with the tools, okay? Um, where do you keep your tools? Um, I have some by the back door um, on a rack, and then I have some put away in um, a little storage unit that I made that's on wheels in my off the side of the dining room area. Okay, so that's in your apartment. Some are in the apartment, some are out? No, they're both in the apartment, just different locations in the apartment. Okay. I've had to move them around. Okay. And the basement, um, is that something anybody has access to? No. Well, the tenants have access to it because we each have a key. Okay. Um, because it's paddle locked, but it's not anything that we use or use to store anything. Or There is much more where that came from in the prosecution's case against defendant Adam Montgomery. And we'll keep you updated on all new developments in New Hampshire from gavel to gavel. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden, and you are watching Law and Crime.